Hi everyone, my name is Trisha. I am a technical trainer with RAN 3D and I'll be stepping you through uh, today's video. We're going to be talking about the save management function within CATIA version 5. I really like this tool. I am a visual person. Uh, graphs and charts and all that kind of stuff really seems to click better with me. So the reason I like this tool is because no matter how many windows that I have opened inside of CATIA at one time, as soon as I go into File and Save Management, it shows me an, a list. Each file that I have open has its own individual line item. So I can kind of click through and pick and choose which items I want to save, or I could even do a Save As command to save it as a separate file. And it's all encompassed within one single dialog box. In order to show you how to use this, uh, we're going to step through a, a small example where I have two cylinders and I put them into a product and then we're actually going to save the product and the two part files uh, as a separate revision in another folder and we're doing that all using the save management command. So to get started I have my two part files created really simple uh, as you can see they're just two small cylinders. I haven't saved anything yet so I'll start using the save management command now. And keep in mind if you wanted to you could individually click within these two different part file windows and then do a file save as. But again since I'm a visual learner I'm going to go up to file and down to save management and this is where you can see the beauty of the save management. So everything that I have opened currently um, or I'm using CATIA is going to show in this list and each item has its own individual line within the dialog box. So you can see that both of these files, they are CATIA part files, uh, they're brand new. You can see the names that I've given them initially. The location is currently empty because I don't have it saved anywhere else. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on each one of these and tell it to be saved into a folder that I have on my desktop. So I'll click on save as initially. I'll go over to the desktop and then it's actually within a subfolder that I've called save example. There it is, my folder. So I'm going to save both of these into my folder. You can see that it does now fill in that location and it does give the action of having it that initial save. I'll click on the second line item and do the same thing. Now it is important to note here that if you get this dialog box filled out but you forget to actually click the OK button, you will have not saved anything. I have several students who have done that before in the past after they filled out a really large dialog box. So the OK button is important. Now once I click on it, uh, those have currently been saved into that uh, location that I've called my folder. And now we're going to place these into a product file. So to create my product file, I'll simply go up here uh, to File, New, and then select Product from my list. I'm going to rename my product here. Cylinder Assembly. Tiling my windows vertically so I can see them on the screen. I'm going to drop those smaller cylinders into the product file. And the way that you can do that is you can use the right click method or the icon or if you prefer the click dragging and dropping method like myself you can do that as well. Let me maximize that assembly window so we can see both of these and they're on top of each other right now. Uh, so I'm going to use my compass, you could also use the snap or the constraints uh, and I'm just going to move those apart from each other. Uh, so what I'll do now is I'll snap my compass onto the little cylinder and I'm not doing anything super fancy here I'm just going to move it up so that way you can see that there is a space in between them and we've now completed uh, our product file now the product file itself will now need to be saved again you could do a file save as because we are active in the product window or you can come into file save management and as you can see that in the save management dialog box it is showing us that we have that new cylinder assembly CATIA product created so using the same method as before I'm just going to come over here and hit save as and save it to that exact folder location here called my folder. Just like before don't forget to click the OK button that is the most important step. So next thing that we're going to do is we're going to apply a couple of different changes 
to both the part and the product files simulating um, a scenario where you would want to create several different revisions or uh, different configurations so how to actually take your original file and maintain it but then to create several different replications easily the first thing that I might do is actually tile my screens vertically so I can see things a little bit easier for no other reason other than it's my personal preference the first thing I want to do to make a couple changes is to tell my little cylinder to be a little bit smaller so I'll come into the pad feature and tell that to be shorter I'm also going to add a hole in the middle of the big cylinder and diameter basically just large enough to fit the blue cylinder coming back to my product file let me maximize that here I'm going to make a few constraints between these items so I'll first make a coincident constraint and then perhaps an offset constraint as well give that an update so I have made changes to both the part file and to the product file, or both part files I should say. So let's now see how we can use that save management dialog box to save these in a completely separate folder as a different revision. Inside of file and save management you can see where all three of these have been classified as uh, the modifications made. They're still all being saved to that same exact my folder. So if I were to click through each one of these and perform a traditional save, it is going to save over the original uh, configuration that I had. Now in order to fix that, I'm going to click on uh, the Katia product, and I'm actually going to come over here and I'm going to hit the save as command. When I hit the save as command, instead of telling it to go to the my folder location, I'm actually going to tell it to go into that new folder rev1. I'll click save and then I don't want to leave it set to the same Katia product name I want to basically add on the end of it uh, rev1 so it'll say cylinder assembly rev1 now the way that I can do that is I can use this pattern name that is within of the save management dialog box and the way that this works is you use the asterisk to determine whether or not there should be a prefix or suffix or both if you wanted it if you have text and then the asterisk, it tells Katia to put that as a prefix. If you have an asterisk and then the text, it knows to put it as a suffix. So I'm actually going to take my asterisk and I'm going to put it in the beginning with a space. Uh, and if I hit apply pattern on the line item that I have highlighted, you can see that space rev1 was added to that name. At this point in the dialog box, we are now ready to also tell those part files to be saved to that separate folder with uh, a name that has uh, Rev1 put on the end of each title. So the good thing is it makes it really easy for us in this dialog box. All we have to do is hit propagate directory on the Katia product line item that we have highlighted. What this will do is it will tell all those child parts associated with the product to be saved in that same folder location as well. So notice right now before I hit the button those two Katia part files are saved under my folder. As soon as I hit propagate directory both of those are now being saved into folder rev1. I want each one of those inside of the physical name to get that space rev1. So either individually or um, together you can hit the apply pattern. All I did was hold down the control key and you can see that the name gets added. And finally our last step is to make sure that you are always clicking OK at the end. So now you have two completely independent product files and their respective part files that you can use. To show you that I'm going to just pop up the folders that I used. So my folder, the original one, has all three files with the original name. And then if I explore the folder rev1, which is that secondary save location, you can see that I have all three files with the space rev1, indicating that they are, again, separate files that you can use and work with. So that is the beauty of the save management, being able to manipulate how to save within one single dialog box.